plus. The play 16 would tell the running back or the fullback to line up deeper so he can run the play like we'd want to run, run the play. All right, now, let's say we want the halfback to run the ball. We'd call strong right change 16 boss. So we would like the fullback and the halfback to both be able to run 16 off tackle to the strong side. So let's go with this above diagram. All right, this formation would be strong right, 16 boss. And what would happen would be our flanker would drive off the deep one third. Our halfback would block the force or the strong safety sitting out into this area. Our tight end would base block. Our guard and tackle would block these two guys on a combo. Our center and our backside guard would block the nose and the back linebacker on a Lido. Our backside tackle would use an end wind seal. And our fullback now, don't forget, we've called strong right. He'd line up at six yards plus. He'd take a little open step, and he's going to cram it for the inside leg of the tight end. The quarterback's going to front out with depth and get the ball deep to the fullback. In the fullback, you're going to have a multiple cut off tackle inside or all the way back on a cutback. All right, let's say we wanted our halfback to run the ball strong, 16 boss. We now would call strong right, change. That would put the halfback behind the quarterback, the fullback behind the right tackle. Of course, when you hear the word 16, the running back's going to line up at six yards plus. Then the fullback would block the force man or the support, and our halfback would run the off tackle play. Okay, this play 16 and 17 boss is similar to the play we ran last year that we called 46 or 47 to the strong side. But if you'll remember, on 46 or 47, our fullback was tighter. This year, we're basically going to do away with the 46 and 47 play and add the 16 or 17 play, which deepens the running back and really gives you even a better cut than 46 or 47. All right, so this is 16 boss with the fullback carrying the ball or the halfback carrying the ball. Again, the quarterback will front out. All right, let's go to the same theory, only let's call the play now 16 or 17 Mike. All right, so I'm going to raise 16 boss, and I'm going to add the word 16 Mike. On the word 16 Mike, we're going to take the halfback or the blocking back, and again, making some lines here. Just kind of mess us up. May have to do a little better job of erasing. So bear with me here. Okay. Okay. On 16 Mike, we're going to have the blocking back on the other side of the ball carrier. All right, and he's going to fill up here and help the tackle with the end wind seal. Fill up here and help the tackle with the end wind seal. And now our flanker, or our Z-man, when we hear the word Mike, he's going to have to be responsible to block the strong safety or the support. Now, we may have to line you up in here close and do some different things with you. So what we wanted to introduce is we wanted a way to run the fullback and the halfback off tackle. Somebody's got to block the force. If we called boss, the lead back blocks the force. If we called Mike, the flanker or the Z-man blocks the force. All right, now, how would we get into these formations where the back lined up weak? All right, if this is the full back and this is the halfback, this would be pro right, 16 Mike. Okay, if we wanted the halfback to run the ball, and this be the fullback, that would be pro, right, change, okay, 16 Mike. So what we've done is, when the halfback is to the strong side, it's strong. All right, when the halfback's to the weak side, it's pro. All right, when the fullback's to the strong side, it's strong change. And when the fullback's to the weak side, it's pro change. All right? So in review, we want to be able to run a 16 boss, a 16 Mike. All right? And we want to be able to have the fullback and the halfback carry the ball. That's our first play that we're going to run as an ALF tackle play.
we just talked about the strong side off tackle play to the running back behind the quarterback. 16 or 17 boss or 16 or 17 Mike. Now we want to be able to run the same play to the split end or the weak side. And we'll call this play 16 or 17 M. M means we're going to run the same exact play to the weak side or the split end. So the blocking back would now kick out the offside, outside linebacker, and the running back would open slightly and then try to cram it right for that inside leg of the tackle, and he'd run north and south or cut her back and run the daylight type of play. We can have our halfback carry the ball, which would be a pro-right change, or we can have the fullback carry the ball and just call it a pro-right. Don't forget, when you hear 16 or 17, you're at about six yards plus, and that again is an example of running the same play to the strong side to the weak side. On the weak side, this is the X receiver, and he will probably have to block the most dangerous of the free safety or the corner, whoever we feel is the most dangerous support man, and then our backside corner or uh, backside uh, Z flanker will, will uh, have a cutoff block across field. So this is play number two <clears throat> in our progression that we feel uh, is important for next year. Okay, now uh, we've just covered our off-tackle game with the 16 or 17 going strong, which means boss or Mike, and our 16 or 17 going weak, which utilizes the letter M. All right, now the play that fits in with the off-tackle play is the outside play. And this year, this is the way we'd like to run outside to the tight end going to our strong side. We will either use the word 18 and 19. Of course, we're using 18 now. We're dealing with the right. Here's our tight end to the right. 18 boss. All right, 18. And down here, we could use the word 18 Mike. All right. Now, the word 18 means the plays are going to look exactly like 16 to start with. And what we're going to do is, if we use the word boss, our flanker's going to run off the deep third. Our blocking back's going to still block the force. But now our tailback is going to slash it at approximately the inside leg of the tight end, and he's going to think outside. The quarterback's going to open up and give the ball to the running back. And don't forget, there may be some multiple cuts up into this lane. But it's probably not going to cut all the way back like the 16 or 17 play cuts back. So we've got an 18 play that fits in with our first play we talked about, our 16 play. And we will have our tight end block the outside backer on the outside number and get movement on them. Our guard and our tackle will combination block those two, which we'll call a tight slip. Our center and backside guard will work a slip on the nose and we'll still run an end win seal. Now, if we wanted to come down and run the same play, <coughs> but have some insurance on the backside with the blocking back, we'd call it 18 Mike. And on 18 Mike, the flanker or the Z-man, he would block the support. And we would still run for the inside leg of the tight end and think about bouncing the ball outside or wherever the running lane is. Don't forget the same thing with the formations. If we want the fullback to carry the ball, this would be strong right, 18 boss. If we want the halfback to carry the ball, it would be strong right change, 18 boss. This formation right here would be pro-right, 18 Mike, or if the halfback carried the ball, pro-right change, 18 Mike. Again, you'll notice the quarterback's fronting out, the ball carrier is deep, and this is the way we're going to run the plays for next year.
Okay, the next play we want to talk about is the exact same play as the 18 or 19 boss or Mike to the strong side, but running the play to the weak side. And if we run the play to the weak side, the ball, the blocking back will block the weak outside backer. The running back will still run out into this area uh, for the inside leg of a tight end who is not there, of course, a little wider course, and he'll be able to bounce it inside or outside. The X will block the most dangerous between the free safety and the corner, and now we will call the play 18 or 19, in this case, M. M means to the weak side. All right? And we can still have our fullback carry the ball or the halfback carry the ball, depending on the variations uh, that we want for that week. Okay? So we've already uh, <coughs> reviewed our off-tackle play strong and weak, which is 16 or 17. Our outside play off that same series, which is 18 or 19 strong or weak. And now we want to basically run the same types of plays, but we want the running back to be at a tighter depth. So our backs are on the same alignment. Okay, you'll notice those other plays, the 16 and 17 and the 18 and 19 package, the running back was deeper at six and a half yards or six yards plus depth. Now, when we want the backs to be at the same level, so it's not a giveaway whether we're going right or left, we want to be able to run what we call the 20 series. So let's go with our outside play to the strong side, and we'll go to the right here. We're talking about 28 boss or 28 Mike. Okay, and what we want to do is, if we want the fullback to carry the ball, this would be strong right, 28 boss. If we want the halfback to carry the ball, it would be strong right change, 28 boss. All right, on strong right, 28 boss, the halfback would block the force, the fullback would run the hard slashing veer course for the butt of the tight end that we've run here for years, and the blocking assignments can be a number of two or three different things in here. We've done B blocking, but basically the best blocking we use is our tight slip block because it is an eight hole play. Again, if we want the halfback to carry the ball, it would be strong right change. Now, same theory, if we wanted to let the back carry the ball, but the flanker block the force, we would just call the play 28 or 29 Mike. And on our 28 or 29 Mike, our flanker would block the force. Our blocking back would be over here cutting off to the weak side. These are the same procedures that we've had with the other plays. So 28 is like 18, except the ball carrier is tighter. And his feet are approximately at five yards. OK? Last thing I'd like to talk about is the 20 series going to the weak side with the ball carrier and the running and the blocking back both at the same depth, somewhere around uh, five, uh, five yards depth, as we would call 28 or 29, in this case, M. All right, and our blocking back would block the weak outside backer. Our full back would run the hard veer course over into this area. Our X receiver would block the most dangerous of the free safety or the corner. And again, if we wanted to give the ball to the fullback, that would be pro right 29M. If 
we wanted to give it to the halfback, it would be pro right change 29M. Again, the big difference is if we wanted the ball carrier to be deeper and still run over this area, we put it in the 18 or 19 category. Do it, guys. Good to see all of you. First play we want to put in today now is Fox two or three draw. One of our best plays. In the, from the past two years. Now in the Fox two and three draw, the thing we want to remember now is that the halfback and the fullback both are in a balanced alignment. Then too, the thing that we have to remember on Fox two and three draw is that we always have to put the flanker Z in a position that he can block the force, either the strong safety or the corner if he rolls up or if he comes down inside like Pittsburgh does in case the ball has to bounce outside. Now we run the Fox 2 and 3 draw how we want to block it basically the same way we've been doing it. Now what we're going to do, we're going to slide the line basically. These two are responsible for those two guys, this right guard and the center for the nose and the peg backer. Now, the guard here, he's going to block the end and the wind backer. The tight end, he's going to set on the Sam, and he's got the outside backer all the way. Now, the key block right here is the block basically by the tackle on the end. If that end goes outside, he's just going to ride him out. No problem at all. Now, the fullback, he will just take a shuffle step, and now he'll come up, and he's going to key the block on that end. If he goes outside, then now he's going to come up inside and he's going to block the mic. Now remember, fullback, it's important that you do what? You cut that guy. Cut him. Get him down. Get his hands down. You get his hands down now, and that will enable the halfback to make a break. Now, the halfback, you're going to have a good alignment outside right there, really in the boots of the tackle. Don't cheat inside. Again, don't cheat inside because we don't want to hurry the action. We want the quarterback, as he drops, he wants to get his head downfield to get this guy and then that guy right there, the mic and the peg, to drop. Now, when that happens, then the halfback, he'll shuffle over, and then he'll come, and now he's going up inside again, keying that block. Now, I talked about the Z. The thing the Z wants to do, he'll come in motion, and we'll do that. We'll send him in motion. This formation right here would be pro right, Z right. And he's going to come right here, and now he's going to block the force right there. He's going to be responsible for the force, and no problem with that. And now again, the X, he's going to go across field, and he's going to block deep middle right there. Okay? And again, we're talking about Fox 2 and 3 draw, and we're talking about it out of basically a pro alignment. Now, in running the play, we can also run the play out of split backs, Out of split, where now we have, again, a balanced alignment with the backs. Again, we're going to bring the Z in motion, or we'll line him up tight right here, Z, or we'll bring him in motion. And when we do that now, he again, he's got who? He's got the force. He's got the strong safety. So we'll take care of that. Now the other example, again, he's going to block the sand. Now if the end comes down inside. The fullback will shuffle in now because he's in split backs, and now he'll have to adjust outside to block the mic backer. Again, we're getting this action here coming over from the back side. He's here. He's here. Now he'll shuffle over the top again here, and now he'll bounce it outside. And again, we're talking about Fox 2 and 3 draw. We talked about it out of pro. We talked about it out of split backs. And again, we could even run it if we wanted to out of the eye. A good play for us. Let's continue with it, make it a successful play, and let's look at a few of the clips.
The next play we want to talk about is a variation of one play, 36 or 37 counter boss, or 36 or 37 counter. Now, as you see here, the formation in which we want to run the play, every time now, when we run the counter, we want the, half, the ball carrier, the ball carrier to be in a position where he's behind the quarterback. So, in this situation, if we want to call the play, we would call strong right change 36 counter boss. Strong right change, 36 counter boss. Now the reason we've called that is because now we have the fullback in the alignment to the strong side. And we have the halfback deep directly behind the quarterback. Now remember, you notice here that we are in a staggered alignment. Now, in order to run this particular play, we said 36 or 37 counter balls. We have to have a guy on the back side to block the zip. Okay? So right here, in order to really complete it, we have to say strong right change 36 counter balls, and we have to have a zip with it. Okay? Now, with the zip, that's going to send the Z in motion. And we bring Z in motion, and he's going to block the first thing that shows off the tackle's butt. So if anything would come really hard down inside, he still has to be in a position to block that man. Now, 36 counter balls. When we run the play, the big thing, the tight end is going to come down, and he's got the defensive end. He's got him all the way. Now, the tackle, he's going to go backside, and he's responsible to block the peg. The seven and the right guard, he's got the nose, he's going to slam it and then come over and he's got the defensive end. The right, I mean the left guard now, he's going to pull and he's going to take a pass and he's going to run over the Sam backer. He's going to run him over. Not finesse him or anything, he's going to run his ass right over. Now, the guard, I mean the tackle, he's going to pull also. Now he's going to come inside in the hole and he should pick up the Mike backer. Now. A fullback, because we said 36 counter boss. Boss, back on force. Now, if the force is here, then he'll release here, bluffing, bluffing the sandbacker to block the force. He'll bluff him. As he bluffs him, he'll get that guy to widen. But he wants to bluff him, and he's got the force. Now, if the strong safety is inside, now his path changes. He's going to now take the best path he can get, and now he'll have to come right through here to block that strong safety. Because what's going to happen, if he's aligned in here, you're going to have some type of back or force alignment. So now he's going to take the best path to block the force. Now, the halfback, he's going to do what we've always done. He's going to take his counter steps here, and now he's reading the block of who? The backside tackle. He's keying his block right there. In other words, he kicks out the guard, the tackle goes inside, and we're thinking where? Inside with the football. Inside. The quarterback will reverse out right here, give him the ball right there, boom, and he's right up the field. Okay? Again, the play is 36 or 37 counter boss. Now, other variations of the play. If we just want to run 36 or 37 counter, just 36 or 37 counter, the thing we'll do now is now we have to say that our flanker Z, the flanker Z, he must block the force. And we didn't say boss, we just said counter, 36 or 37 counter. Right? Now, let's just change the alignment. Right here we said strong change. Now let's just talk about strong. Now, if we want to go strong with this particular type of play, there has to be a variation. All right? We go strong right. Now we have to have the halfback coming back here. So if we go strong right, we want the fullback to carry in this situation. Now we just put him in motion, strong right, hung left, and now he's got the zip. He'd be tighter, the motion, and he's got the zip.
The blocking is still the same. In other words, he's here, he's backside, he's here, slamming, coming here, he's got the sand, he's coming up inside. Now the fullback is the ball carrier, and he'll come here to counteraction, and he's back up inside with the ball, quarterback reverse, right there. And again, we're talking about 36 or 37 counter. The only thing that changed the ball carrier basically was the formation. Now, if we just go pro, and now this is the halfback. Now he'll come here, the fullback will run the counter action, and the same exact thing happens. Now he's got the force, and again, X, the guy, we always exclude, he's got the deep middle. Okay, and the same thing would happen now on 36 or 37 counter balls. You have to excuse me, one thing remember, I'm right-handed and always do things right-handed. We can run the same things to the left. The formation changes. The depth of the halfback or the depth of the fullback is important, and where they will be staggered, like we're running 16 or 17, 18 or 19. Now, again, let's look at a few clips from last year. All right, the next play, guys, is 12-13 track. And we're going to run it two ways. We're going to run 12-13 track strong. And it's been an effective play for us up inside. We want to attack the middle. A lot of times we find ourselves always wanting to go a little bit to the outside. But again, this is a play to attack the middle. Now, we want to run this out of split backs. And we do it out of split backs. Again, we're talking about a balance alignment with the backs. Now, one of the most important things that happens at this play is right here with the tight end and the tackle. They have to do an effective job now of do executing what we call a false B, where he's coming here, a false B, and really you want that guy to fight back to the outside on the B. And now he's coming here. Now, when they will execute the false B, the thing that's going to happen now, we need this guy, the half fullback here, in this situation, really to get it going outside, really with a great fake. And as he goes outside with that great fake, we want him to bring those arms right here, grab that shirt, and again, run as if he has the ball, really executing and really working on that guy right there and these two defensive linemen. Now, Again, what we want to do, we want to get a double team at the point. Double team and a rub off on the peg backer. We want to get a cutoff block here on the back side. Now, the other thing that we need with this, we need a zip. So we need Z to come in motion in a zip situation. And now he's going to block the first thing that shows, which is the win or anything off of the tackle's butt. Now, the guard's going to trap. He's going to trap, he's going to pull, and he's going to block the first thing he sees. It could be the Mike backer, or if this guy doesn't bite on the false B and he comes down inside, he'd end up blocking him. The quarterback will open up, the halfback will come tight up inside, slight hesitation, but he's coming up inside, he's going to key the double team, hug the double team, and key the trap and get upfield with the football. Again, we're talking about the formation here is split right zipper, 12 trap, and we're going to the strong side. Now, we want to run the play to the weak side. The halfback, the fullback, and Z. And before I leave this play, let's talk about X again. He's got the deep middle. Now, we talked about 12 or 13 trap strong, I mean weak, excuse me. Now we want to run to the weak side. Again, we want a balanced alignment. A balanced alignment with the backs. Now, when we run the trap on the, on the front side now, on the back side here, we want the back side, excuse me, we want this guy blocking him, and he's on the sand backer. Now, again, we got a double here and here.
to the backside M, Mike Linebacker. Now he's going to influence this guy. He's going to influence him, hopefully to get him upfield. Hopefully get him upfield, and again, he's working up the field. Now, again, he's going to come and he's going to trap. The first thing that he sees, the very first thing that he sees, he's going to come here. Now he's going to work up the field, hopefully get that guy right here. Now what we're going to get with him, an influence outside, hopefully the pull of the wind, and again, he's going to open up, slight hesitation, hitting it. But he's going to hit it, just a slight pause for a second, and again, he's keying, that he's hugging the double team, keying the trap, okay? And that's 12-13 trap, and we're going to run it to the weak side. Again, versus a reduction to the back side, you have to be alert for the Tommy call. Talking about the halfback or the ball carrier, he has to be alert for the Tommy call, and that alerts the tackle now that he will become the trapper. Now, again, let's look at it on film last year and uh, make it go. Hey, before we go to the film now, let's just, just review. We, I don't want to leave out two of our strongest blockers right here. Chris Collinsworth, hey, once you get down the field now, you're blocking deep middle right there. Hey, you're down the field, you're blocking deep middle right there, Eddie. Now, let's get these guys down because we're going to break it. And now this guy is the only guy, or this guy in here who has that deep inside. Now they're the only guys who can stop the play. Now let's check it out on film. Probably the best, best play we had two years ago was the halfback 28-29 Grace. And that's the play I want to put in now. Now the halfback 28-29 Grace, the whole play is designed for us to get outside with the football. I mean outside. Now we can block in many ways inside here. We could say we could have like a tab scheme, T-A-B, where the tackle and the back work together. We can have a B scheme where the tight end and the tackle work together on a B. But what we want to put in now is just a basic M scheme, halfback 28 or 29 grace, and we're going to run a basic M scheme. Now, what that means now is we've got an M. He's blocking him. He's blocking him. Now, he has him everywhere he goes. Big block here is by the tight end on the Sam back. Now, again, on the back side now, we could get a slip here with these two working here, and Jimmy's worked different variations where he takes him and the, and the guard pulls all the way around to block the peg backer, and again, that's a game plan situation. Now the tackle, he'll cut off that end. He'll cut off the end. Now the fullback, very important now, he's got to block that man right there, the Mike linebacker, and we want to get him cut. He's got to take the best path to him, but he has to first realize, is the guard covered? If the guard is covered, he's going to block the man over the guard. If there is any leakage in the B gap, right there, if that guy gets beat right now, then again, the fullback must pick that man up. Now, if, that, if those two guys are blocked, then the fullback will start the B gap, and now he'll make that adjustment, and he'll meet the Mike linebacker at a junction point, and he'll cut him. He'll cut him, and we'll be able to get outside. The guard will pull now, and what he wants to do, he wants to pull, and he's got the force. In this situation, he's got the fourth. And what he wants to do, he wants to try to get outside. He, want to work, he wants to work to the outside thigh pad of the man. Now, that means that the Z, he's going to release, and he's got deep third. He's going to release cross field, talking about X. The halfback, in his alignment, he's going to cheat up a little bit, just up. Right off the, he right, he's going to be right on the toes of the fullback. His heels want to be right at the toes of the fullback. 
So now, as he comes across, the quarterback will hand him the ball right there, and it will force him to come straight across, and he wants to stretch it, and we want to get outside with the ball. And talk about halfback 28 or 29 grace. It's an outside play, and again, we're just talking about an M scheme here. We're not talking about tabbing it, where the tackle and the back work together. Again, it could be a game plan thing. B blocking it. Again, it's a game plan thing. We're talking about M blocking it all the way. And again, fullback, as you get outside, cut the Mike linebacker, build a pile, and then anything, any pursuit coming from the backside, hopefully maybe by you cutting them, will destroy the backside pursuit. Again, that's a play that Max, you had a tremendous amount of success with, and JV made some long runs. Now again, let's look at it from 1987. Now, as you look at the running game and you review it, this tape, things I want you to remember now, the formations, formations are important, the alignment of the backs are important. Listen to those calls, like the change calls. You have to also be alert for what kind of blocking are we having. Is it an am blocking? Or is it a mic play? Are we running strong or weak? Is it boss blocking where the back is on the force? And the other thing is be alert for certain calls. Review in your own mind could I have a Tommy call? What constitutes a Tommy call? And in the passing game, when you get there, especially you backs, be alert for those Rip and Liz calls. Know what they are. Know that it's a molly with you and the guard. And also, be alert now for a possible route for a Lester. All right, enjoy the offseason. Look forward to seeing you at the minicamp. Okay, the first play that we need to talk about here is uh, a play we use out of our slide protection. Remember, 60 and 61 means slide. Uh, right or left by the line, and the fullback has a double read the other way. Uh, short, the term short means that the quarterback's going to take a five-step drop. All right? So that has a meaning to the line on how short they take them on. When we call short 60 or 61 Y option, we would prefer, but it's not necessary, but we would prefer that the fullback steps away from the way we're going to run the option. Okay? Before I start that, the first thing we want to uh, accomplish here is we would like the tight end or whoever's called on the option, we could have X option here, but this is Y option. We want the tight end virtually working against the linebackers. We don't want defensive back in the area where we're going to try to throw the option. So the way we throw Y option is out of usually some form of trips flip. Okay, this one is trips right flip. Now we could put the half back in the backfield and motion him out there and we do that quite a bit. Uh, <coughs> a quick review on 61. Remember the line has one, two, three, four guys. You slide this way, make your calls. This tackle is man to man, and the fullback is going to read inside out on those guys. All right, the option pattern. We prefer an inside release if we can get it. We don't force it if the guy's hard inside. But what we want to do is we want to go inside and then read the drop of this man. As soon as you can, you want to go straight up the field. Let's say that this guy is dropping here. You want to get your body on him, all right, and then turn away from the nearest defender. If this guy is the nearest defender, you would just turn away. The depth of this pattern is 10 yards, exactly. Uh, we got away from a little bit of that, and it hurt us. If they go the other way, let's say he comes back, as soon as you can, you turn straight up field, you get on the nearest defender, hold him off, and then turn away from him. All right, that's against zone. Against man, if it is man to man, let's say one of these guys covers you or the free safety comes over and covers you, you either break out, which happens most of the time, or in, All right, which very rarely happens, but we have the option there to do that. All right, the other receivers, the man on the option side, it's usually the halfback, he's going to run 
I like a quick out pattern. If it's from motion, he can come in here and get to this spot. Remember, if you're ever covered by a linebacker when you're flanked out, you take off. All right, on the back side of all options, uh, the quarterback will read the option and then come back to the backside pattern. And we like to do a drag hook combination. Remember, anytime we say 60 or 61, the fullback is going to check his two guys and then go through. Yeah. Tell me when to start. All right, now remember the code word for this play is short 61 or 60 yogi. That's how we would audible to it. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of plays from last year. All right, the next play we want to talk about is a 76 or 77 drag hook. Notice that I did not say the term short or use a prefix three, so the quarterback knows when he calls this play he's taking a seven-step drop. All right, to run this play, we have to be in some form of trips formation. We either line up in strong like this or put the halfback out here or motion the halfback to it, maybe put him in outside and go hum short. 76 protection, remember, is a strong molly. This guard is on a molly. This term seven means weak flow by the, the fullback away from the tight end. Six tells the right guard to molly. He's got that to that. If they both come, the Y is Q. All right? He will look quickly every time whether they come or not. All right, the way the pattern develops here, uh, the first receiver or the Q receiver is Y. He runs a drag. All right? He sits down approximately three or four yards deep, three or four yards from the sideline. The Z is going to run the hook pattern, all right? And the hook pattern is uh, 16 rounding to 18 yards deep, all right? We change that depth according to game plan, but the that's the base. Now, Z, you notice your split is 10 yards. You don't want to be too close. You want to be, you want to sp spread this out to get as far away from this guy as you can. Remember, this is an upfield pattern. We'll run it into that guy's technique. To get a cloud roll, you'll sink inside and then run your hook. The halfback is scat. He has no blocking responsibilities. He does what we call a scat slip, all right, to the inside. And he doesn't want to adjust outside because the, the guy doing the hook has the rights to the outside. All right, the progression here, before I start that, here's what the backside guy does. He does a get open pattern, and he's trying to get inside the first uh, zone defender. So if they drop like this, you want to come in and you're about eight yards deep and you just kind of wait there. The progression is Q, 1 or 1A, one all right, 2, and then the fullback is doing a wide the other way. Okay, the code name for this is 76 or 77 drunk, like a guy that's drunk down the line, all right? All right, let's take a look at the three or four examples of this play. All right, now... If Eddie and Timmy were paying attention to this thing, okay, pop quiz, when I drew the 76 drunk, I did something wrong, all right? I drew the pattern into the guy's technique. Remember, it can look like that, or it can look like that, and then slide out. But one major thing, I drew it too deep, all right? You guys should have said something or got on the phone and called me. It's 14 rounding to 16, not 18. Timing of the pattern with seven-step drop, that's where it comes out. All right, the next play that we're going to talk about is, you know, really one of our basic, basic plays. 78 or 79 if we're in a left formation, X hook. What this is, it's a weak side, basically a weak side flood pattern with weak flow. Seven tells the backs to flow weak, 
8 and 9 means solid protection. It also tells the tight end you're slow. You have to tell the tackle you're slow. You're going to block first before you release. And what we're trying to do here is X is going to run a hook. All right. The halfback is going to do the fan pattern. Okay. And this is uh, 5 to 7 yards deep. This is 16 to 18 again. All right. And the fullback is going to check the outside linebacker and then run a slip. What we're trying to do is create a triangle over here and flood, flood the pattern. On the back side, the Z is going to do the get open, much like X did on 76 drunk. All right, he can work the tight end area, and he's approximately eight yards deep. The tight end, after he slow blocks, is going to drag. Now, there's a whole bunch of different things we can do off of this play. The first thing is we can put the half back out here, all right, and, and make it look like 78X angle. We can put the halfback virtually anywhere and put him in motion. In fact, when we audible to that, and the audible is, all it said is 78, the halfback goes in automatic motion. Again, this is a seven-step drop by the quarterback. All right? The progression is 1, 1A, 2, and then 3, back to this side. Now, certain, certain times, we'll just say, uh, call a play like 78X hook, X shake, and that'll be one of the examples uh, after I finish here. If you're ever tagged, X, you run the play. All right, you run that tag regardless of the defense. If you are not tagged, all right, this is all we've called or we've audible to a 78, you have the option of going to the post versus no free safety. In other words, let's say that he's come out to cover that guy or he's come over here. There's nobody in the middle of the field. There's nobody in the square deep in the middle you have the option of going to the post. When that happens, you generally get inside technique. Now, remember, quarterback, if you're throwing that post pattern down the middle versus no free safety only, you don't necessarily have to throw it down the field the seam. You can throw it way over here across the field. Just knowing that if this tight end has to slow block, the strong safety may cheat a little bit. So you have to make sure if you're going to throw it to the post across the field, you get it over this guy's head. All right, let's take a look at a few of them. All right, now you X's, I did the same thing to you that I did to uh, the flankers on 76 drunk. Now, I know that Chris probably missed it, all right? Michael Martin, I don't know about it. I know Ira caught it. There's no question in my mind that he knew how, how deep to run the pattern. But remember the hook, if you're going to run the hook part of the 78X hook, go into the guy's technique, and it's 14 rounding to 16. It could look like you take him in like that and then hook and slide out. Now remember, whenever you take that guy in like that, that means he's got inside technique. He probably doesn't have any help inside, so then it will change to a hard post. Depth, 14 to 16, not 16 to 18. Way to go, Ira. All right, the next play we want to talk about is probably the, the play that we got a lot of the most production out of this year, but we really need to work on this play to make it even better. 78 or 79 X angle. Okay, the code word for that is 78 angle exit. 78 angle exit. That's the way we audible to it or when we're in our attack offense. All right, 78 again, it's weak flow. 8 or 9 tells the tight end it's solid protection, so he's slow. All right. Anytime the fullback hears the term angle, he stays. He does not go out on the pattern. Quarterback, seven-step drop. All right, and here's how the play unfolds. We're usually in some form of double wing when we run this, all right, because it takes the halfback too long to get out of the backfield and go downfield. He is going to run a corner pattern. Now, we've got to get better at running this corner pattern halfbacks. You have to get up the field at least 10 yards, give a good post move, and then go to the corner. Now, there might be a guy back there, but we want you to run right that, that, that pattern every time. 
You're only going to get the ball versus man to man. All right. The X is going to run the angle pattern. We come off the line slow. We're usually a 10 yard split. We come off the line slow, let this develop, and then we run the angle reading man or zone. Now the, the reason it wasn't as good as it has been against man, we were always coming in a just a couple steps and then arrowing out. There were a lot of examples when I broke the film down where you could have come in against man and then busted it for big plays. That's where you get the big plays. We're going to have to be better at that this year. If they are in a zone, all you do is uh, come up off the, uh, it's the same timing, you come slow off the field, you can either hook just to the inside if this guy stays inside of you, or if he buzzes well past you, or you get a cloud roll is what usually happens, you just hook and then slide a little bit, all right? What usually happens is you hook, this guy stays well inside of you, and you just kind of drift outside, you don't arrow out. You only arrow out versus man to man when you get cut off, all right? And when that happens, you have to take four hard steps to the inside. We weren't very good at that. On the back side, the tight end is slow. The Z on 78, it tells you to run and get open. But you know on angle, since this guy could come inside, you want to stay outside of where the tight end lined up. You can't come in over this area and work in here because there's a chance you may run into each other. Again, tight end, you check, drag. 78, angle, exit. All right, here you go. All right, the next tag I want to, uh, play I want to talk about is the bend-in tag, or the bend-in combination. We should run this more this year. It was good to us. We didn't run it enough. Basically, what a bend-in is, it's a weak side flood type pattern. Uh, by flooding the weak side, by bringing people from the strong side across. We run this, uh, the first example I'll give you is Hound 2 bend-in, or we can run it out of 60 or 61 bend-in and then tell the halfback, to get open over the ball. We've run it both ways very successfully. The first receiver is the flanker. All right, now flanker, you can either be on the strong side or in the, in the flip over here. You do a post pattern with no sit. That's your, that's your assignment. You are to get that guy the hell out of there. You're the number one receiver, quarterback. If this guy gets out of the middle or there's nobody in the middle, he's number one. All right, X, you have a 10 yard split. You're running the bending pattern combination. And what it is, it's a deep cross pattern that turns into a sweeping hook versus zone. And the depth is 18 yards. Come straight up the ball, read his technique, let's say he's outside, widening, burst at 18, and then you come in. If it's man to man, you break in. All right, that's where, that's where we need this free safety out of the ball, out of the ballpark there. Now why on bend in, your assignment, this is a three man tag telling X, Y, and Z what to do. You are to do a shallow cross. All right, just like any shallow cross and receivers, uh, wide receivers, you pay attention here too. If again, if it's against a zone, all right, you end up stopping past the numbers usually, all right, and inside the first or the last up defender. Now you got to burst him. You got to go like hell. Let's say it's a zone. He's got out here. You got to go like hell, and then you stop. Don't stop in here on this particular play because then you'll be in the throwing lane. Remember how we stop? We lower our center of gravity. We give the quarterback our numbers and we stop. That's it. Don't jack him off. All right? All right. Hound two, remember, is slide protected by the line. It's play action, not run action, play action. So it's just like 60 to you guys. Fullback, you have Sam. Halfback, you're faking the ball and you have Mike. Nobody comes. You hook right there. Fullback, you're in the flat area. All right. Now, <clears throat> we can put this halfback anywhere. We can put him over here and run it out of 60 where he would come in and, and get open right there. We can put him over here, come over there. We can put Z in the slot and he does his post from there. We can make it look like all kind of different plays. That's the bend-in combination. Three-man tag. All right, let's take a look at these uh, three examples.
the next play we're going to talk about is our Dover combination. Now this is a five-man tag. Dover means deep over pattern by the player designated. If we don't say anything, it's automatic Z Dover. That's the one I'll draw. If we should happen to say X Dover or Timmy Dover or Eddie Dover or whatever like that, that guy is the guy that does the Dover pattern. But this one is 76 Z Dover. Again, weak flow by the backs. Now we can put this into the 60 mode or the 61, the Hound 2 or 3, it's, uh, the three ways we like to run it. The one I'm going to draw up is 76 Z Dover. You step weak, you got a double read. You have a molly. All right? The tight end is Q. All right, in the Dover combination, the first receiver is a guy going through the middle on what we call a dog streak. You have to cut down your split, X in this case, you're the guy, and you're going to go dog streak. You want this guy out of there, downtown deep. If you're uncovered or there's nobody in the middle, you're number one. All right? Why? Uh, let's, let's take Z first since he's the second receiver. We're going to run this Dover pattern exactly this way. All right? No freelancing. This is the way I want you to run it. This is a counter to the combo versus an inside technique when we're running shakes. All right? If we're going to be running a lot of shakes, which I think we should start doing more of, we have to have a counter to it, and this is the pattern. You come straight up the field, you do a hell of a post move. All right, you gather right here, and this is 10 yards, you gather at about 18, hard inside, like you're gonna go back to the shake. All right, make it look exactly like a shake. So when you stem up, this guy will fall back off you, whether he's in a zone or a man. And then you come across hard, and then start to gear down over the ball. The depth of this pattern is 22 yards. Now line, you hear me tell this guy, he's gonna go 22 yards down the field. You have to hold them out a little longer. This is a seven step drop normally with two hitches. All right, that's the timing of the pattern when we want to hit that guy. And the throwing lane is usually right over the ball. He's number two. This is number one. All right, half back and Y, you're doing what we call uh, virtually Dover crosses for lack of a better word. It's not a shallow cross and it's not a speed cross. It's kind of a combination of the two. Y, you want to end up against a zone about 10 yards deep over where, just outside where a tight end would have lined up over here. About 10 yards deep. If it's man, you keep going. Half back, you do the same thing, except now you're going to end up over where the tight end area started from. So you're going to be about 8 to 10 yards deep, stopping against zone, going against man to man. Full back, after you check your protection responsibility, all right, you have the win in this case, you do a late through pattern. So if everybody falls back, you get the ball. So the progression is dog streak, Dover, one of these guys, these guys are both receiver number three and then number four up the middle. Now the reason we designate both of these guys as receivers, let's say that uh, this Mike Backer takes that Dover away. Quarterback, you want to throw it to the number three receiver to the side where the Backer came from that took that Dover pattern away. There will be nobody there. All right? He can't cover that guy and that guy All right, because we'll have separation. That's why this guy's got to be 22. This is kind of distorted. This guy's got to be 22. That guy's got to be 8 to 10. All right? That's the Dover pattern. Now, if everybody falls back, that's where we should be able to get throw this more, get big plays, but if they want to take it back, nobody will be there. Let's say that this guy took him away, that Sam took him away, and Peg ran to there. Well, shit, there's nobody left in the middle unless the nose tackle falls off. All right, so we got to go through our progression. we got to run this play more because it was successful. Go through our progression and take what they give us. All right, let's take a look at a few of them. All right, this next play was probably our most successful play overall that we ran a lot of. All right, fake 36, could be 37, counter buck naked. All right, we usually say right or left in the, if we're calling it in the huddle. 
Remember that the at the line call or attack call would be 36, buck on. And then he usually tells the name of the guard that's going to pull. In this case, Max or Maxi or whatever you say. All right, now what this is, it's a rollout out of pocket uh, pass play uh, to get the quarter, quarterback out of there, but faking a play fake while getting the, the quarterback out of the pocket. Now we're going to make a couple of changes, so pay attention. All right. The line blocking, you're going to do exactly the same as you have. All right, you're going to take that and slam back there and there, okay? Now, guard, we're changing you. Now, pay attention. All right, the, the play looks like this. He's going to slam and then go. He's going to fake the counter, all right, and uh, uh, carry out the play fake or block any backside blitzers. All right. <clears throat> We're not changing the tackle. You have whoever shows in this area. You've been doing a great job, tackles, of flipping this guy to the inside when he crosses your face. All right. If he, if he goes outside, it's the fullback's man, and this guy usually fills inside. Now, buck guard. We're going to pull you, but you're going to have your eyes inside. Now, I didn't say slow down, or I didn't say stop running. Your eyes are on that guy. All right. Cleveland gave us some problems here by blitzing him. All right, or blitzing him outside, that's your man quickly. All right, if he comes, you block him. If he doesn't come, you continue, and then you have the man that virtually the fullback has slammed. Now, fullbacks, we're going to change you also. It could be the halfback when we run fake 46 counter buck naked. Whoever the slam drag guy is, all right, your course is. Whoever the emo is, in man on the line of scrimmage, you're going to go at his outside number. Two numbers right there. You're going to go right at his outside number on a line. And we want him slammed. We weren't very good at it. If he goes up the field like that, you adjust and hit him in his outside number. If, and here's where we're making our big mistake, he goes inside, you're not to slow down and block him and then go. We want you out right now, in that case. If he crashes hard inside, the buck guard, what happens when he crashes hard inside, this guy's usually dropping, the buck guard will block him. All right? The buck guard will block him. When that happens, quarterback, you have to throw the ball quickly to the fullback because the guard's just going to get a piece of that guy. All right, now, quarterback, you're going to make the play fake, and you're going to come outside. Now, we don't want you in here settling down. We want you to break contain. The pattern usually looks like this. We put X on a streak. Sometimes we put him on a comeback or a deep. And we have the Y doing a, what we call a naked over. We also have, when we get a two-guy situation, all right, let's say a backer and a backer in a Bears defense. I won't draw the whole defense. We'll give the fist signal. All right, and it's the tight end's responsibility to give that signal. What that means, since we see so much man-to-man -man in Bears, we're looking for man-to-man. -man, all right, raise him. And you'll either come in motion or cut your split down, and the tight end will go between those two guys and pick this guy, and you become the over guy. All right? Whoever is left over there, in case, let's say, the tight end did the over, the backside Z usually does a speed cross. Week to week, we change it. Sometimes we put you on a post. All right? Uh, uh, if we call the fist signal and the tight end picks, then he becomes the crosser. All right? The, the, thing, the progression is one to two, three is run. We made some big plays by running the ball. Remember, don't cross the line of scrimmage and then throw the ball. All right, take a look at a couple of them. All right, the last play we want to talk about is our mirrored patterns, okay? In other, word, in other words, when we call a pattern and we're just talking to the X and the Z, 
We call that a mirrored pattern. I put it in the hound two or three category because I want to talk in detail about the dancer pattern. So this will be hound two dancer. Now it could be hound two come babe or whatever. Now tight end, you have to know when the outside receivers have a mirrored pattern and you're not involved in the blocking or whatever, you do what we call a middle read. Remember what a middle read is. Take an inside release if you can get it. All right. Go up the field pretty deep. We were at the end of the year, we were going approximately 20, year, 20 yards. We cut that down from like 23. Well, uh, by the time training camp runs around, uh, rolls around, we'll have a depth for you. We're not exactly sure. But what a middle read basically is, if there's nobody in the middle square, you just keep going. All right? If you read it, if there's somebody in that middle square, you do the hook at whatever depth. Let's say it's 20 right now. And then you come back between people. Read the linebackers. All right. The dancer pattern is a pattern that we're, along with comeback, is a pattern we're going to have to throw more of. There's, there's no question about it. Remember, it's an upfield pattern, so we're going to run it into that guy's technique. I'll draw one against an off inside and an off outside. All right? Let's take this one first. We always come off the line of scrimmage. The base split is 10 yards. Hard and fast and straight. As soon as you read technique, you go into the guy's technique. You want to put pressure on him. You don't want him to be coming up the field and he has a nice soft cushion on you and a comfort zone. You want to push on him, and then when you widen, the quarterback's reading you in your stem. Nine times out of ten, unless you're Eddie Brown, you're going to go, he's going to feather out, you're going to go inside. Quarterback, that's when you throw the ball on a line to the inside. Don't pull him in here because the free safety will get over there and intercept it or knock the shit out of him. But it's an on-the-line throw. It's not an over-the-top throw. When we run a pattern against an inside technique, it's just the opposite. Straight up the field, read the technique, he's inside, go right at him. Quarterback, you see this in the guy's stem? We're going to break outside. Pull us outside. Now this one's the over-the-top with air under the ball. All right, we have to get so we can read this. We have to be able to throw this pattern so we can throw comebacks, so we can throw uh, regular hook patterns, so we can throw combos, and all the other stuff we want to throw down the field a little more this year. Hound two, or whatever the protection is, what if we say check hound three? Check hound three, remember what that means. The line slides the other way, the backs have those two guys. All right. Now since Boomer's left-handed, we feature hound three. If Turk was in there, or Mike Norseth, we would feature hound two, because they can turn better. All right. This is again, run act or play action. You guys would slide for those guys. You'd slide for him. And the fullback would have this guy in here. Now remember halfback and fullback again. Your flare control after hound two or hound three likes draw in here. Halfback, you do a, you know, just a kind of a release over the ball. Fullback, you check your guy and into the flat. This is hound two or three dancer. Now we could change the play by just changing the tag. Let's take this one. Hound two or three circle. Okay, in this case, it's hound three circle. Tight end, doesn't change you a bit. A circle pattern, remember, and it's one of our better patterns versus inside or outside technique. Hard to the inside, 10. You're losing about four yards to the inside. Straight up the field, all right? And then, at about 20 yards, you're, turn, you're going to the out. Now, quarterback, we have to anticipate this throw. We weren't very good at this. You have to throw that ball when he's right there, way out there. We'll go get it. Uh, versus an outside technique, same pattern. This is one of the few patterns. We don't attack the technique. Out, uh, and then you're probably going to cross this guy's face. Quarterback, you probably have to pull him back a little bit. All right? That's hound two and three dancer or circle or any mirrored tag. All right, last one. Take a look at it.